Alright guys, so Zach here from Angler's Escape. Today I want to make a video on paddle fishing from the bank or the shore. So we're actually docked up on the shore right now. We just got actually five paddle fish today. Got two of the bigger ones. It's the last day of paddle fish season. The other couple were under the slot limit so we had to release them. But we're getting a lot of paddle fish today. As you can see the shore is right there. So we're fishing, we're basically on the bank right now. So you can catch these guys off the bank. I've caught them off the bank a lot. And what we're doing today to snag these paddle fish from basically the shore is I'm using a really heavy action rod, really stout. And these you don't have to spend a lot of money for. This I actually got for 20 bucks at Walmart, 20 to $30. You just want something that's stout and that it doesn't give a whole lot of give. So when you're pulling this hook through the water, you want it to hit into that paddle fish and stick. If you have a really bendable pole, there's way too much give and you're not able to shoot that hook through the water as much. The next thing you need is a really big reel. This is kind of on the small side. I'll put in the link in the description of some really good reels that are cheap on Amazon. It's cheap as 35 bucks. The bigger the reel, the quicker you can take in line with each reel. And that quicker that line comes in, the faster you can move that hook through the water and the faster it's going that higher velocity, you can impact those paddle fish a lot quicker and get a lot better hook sets and you'll get a lot more fish. The next thing is the pound test line. So heavy action rod, big reels, then you want test line that's anywhere from 50 to 100 pounds and I highly recommend braided fishing line. So braided fishing line one, it's very thin diameter for how strong it is. So you can get a lot more on your spool. So if it starts taking out drag, you can let it go a little ways. And two, it doesn't have nearly as much give as monofilament. So monofilament fishing line, if you hit into a big paddle fish, there's a ton of give and stretching that line and that can allow the hook to pop out. It makes it harder to really get a good hook set. So I really strongly recommend braided line. You can get Brave Fisherman line, and I'll put a link in the description below from amazon.com. I've used them in the past. You can get like a thousand meters for like 20, 30 bucks of 80, 100 pound test line, super cheap. So line's not a problem, but you just have that reel that can hold it, a really big reel. Again, that'll be in the link description. Heavy action rod. And now let me finally show you my the end or the terminal tackle. So right here, I have a 10 knot treble hook and you can pick up a pack of five of these for about five bucks from Walmart. So they come in these, here's a value treble hook. I got this from Walmart, five of them for about five or six bucks. And they have a nice little barb right here. And then basically after I have my hook on my line, I'll show you how to get the hook on your line so it's facing right. Then about anywhere from eight to 18 inches down, I'll have my weight. And so it kind of depends the body of water fish I'm fishing on how much weight I want. Today, I only need about three ounces or so. Now, if I'm fishing somewhere with more current or the fish are deeper, I can go up to about eight or six to eight ounces with a bank sinker. Or if the fish are actually, you can almost see them in the top of the water and they're really shallow, I might even go down to a two ounce. But you need enough weight to cast it out. So generally anywhere from three to eight ounces of weight is what I'm using. Make sure you get a really good knot because after repeated casting, if there's a knot that's a little weak, it can definitely break off. I want to show you how I set up the terminal tackle to catch these fish. So normally what I do, since I'm just showing you guys, I'll use one of these two ounce bank sinkers. Usually I'm using three or four of these. So I'm getting up to four to eight ounces of weight. But basically your sinker, I just tie on like a fisherman's knot, just like you tie on any lure. And again, usually instead of two ounces, I'm using somewhere between four to eight ounces of weight. So I'm going to go ahead and tie that on with just your normal fishing knot, just like you tie on any fishing lure, anything along those lines. And now I have my weight on that four to eight ounces. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up my line about anywhere from sometimes I like to have it pretty close. Sometimes I'll go up to about a foot. Sometimes it just kind of varies on how deep the water is. But what I do is I make a little loop in my line. This is going to be about a foot up from that weight I just tied on. I'm going to go through the eye of this 10 knot hook that I picked up from Walmart. Then I'm going to take this string and put it down below one of the hooks right here. So now I put it down below that hook and now it's on like this. Then what I do is I wrap this string around like so a few times and pull it down. So now when it's just getting pulled through the water, this hook's going through like this and it'll hit those fish. Today we're out here on the river and the paddlefish when they're migrating upstream, a lot of times in river systems they get tired. So sometimes they'll go off behind a wing dike or they'll go in like a little palm patch of water and there's a little creek that flows into here. And what I found over the years is they're kind of pooling right outside this current seam in the slack water. 
So they're right over here is where I'm snagging them. And when you're bank fishing, the hardest thing about paddle fly fishing is finding somewhere that holds fish. It's not hard to get the rod and the reel set up. It's not hard to cast out there, not hard to get the hooks and the weights. It's just finding the fish. And the fish migrate around a lot. So the best thing I can recommend is going and looking on online forums and see if you can get a fishing report or go to the local fish and tackle shop and ask them, hey, are there any paddle fish being caught recently? If you see pictures, see if you can get a report of where the fish are being caught. But once you have a location where you know there's paddlefish, then it's a game of basically chance. You have to do a lot of casting. This is a really hard arm workout. My arms are pretty dead. The last two hours I've been casting to get these five paddlefish. But basically, I really like these big old spinning reels because they've taken so much line if I'm casting it. They cast pretty good. But I want to lob it out there as close to that other side as possible. And now I'm going to have to, as I reel in, and once I have the slack up, I yank it like this. And this yank is when you're going to hit the fish because you're shooting that hook through the water really quickly. And you have to have that high velocity to hit that fish. And again, this is why you want a stout pole so it's not just bending a whole bunch on you because that decreases your velocity of your hook going through the water. And you also want that braided line so there's less give in the line. Make sure you have your drag set because sometimes when these big paddlefish get stuck, they definitely start taking some drag and they can snap your line if you don't have it set. But again, just using the jank, reeling on that slack line, jerking it, reeling in the slack line, jerking it, reeling in the slack line. And it's just rinse and repeat, guys. Kind of mix up your locations. Use higher, bigger weights or smaller weights, depending on where you want to fish the water column. So usually if I haven't caught anything with a smaller weight at the end for a while, I'll go down to a bigger weight because then it'll sleep faster and I'll be fishing a little deeper water. But again, I'm just lobbing it out there about as far as I can and ripping it inward. And so far today, I averaged about a fish once every 20 casts. And that's pretty good, honestly, because sometimes you can sit out here and it could be one fish an hour and you could be doing 100 casts. So it's a, just a lot of casting, a lot of waiting, but the payoff is huge. It's nothing better when you're halfway through a swing and it just stops. And then all of a sudden the drag just starts spewing. It's a great feeling. But guys, I encourage you, use this setup like this. And then the big thing again, go to your local bait and tackle shop, ask friends, see if you can find a fishing report, see if you see pictures, and if there's any river systems that hold paddlefish by you. But you can definitely catch them from the bank. We're on the shore right now, and I can actually walk to this spot too if I didn't want to bring the boat. So there's some big fish, as you saw earlier. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, best of luck fishing. My sister Kylie is doing some snagging. A beautiful day out here in April on the Missouri River. Let's go, Kylie! All right, my sister's got a giant. Hopefully we get it in here. Ooh, it's a nice one, Kylie. It's definitely a paddlefish. Here in a bit, I want to show you guys how I do my setup. Nice one, Kylie. All right, he has surfaced. See a tail sticking out of the water. Almost there. All right. Wrapped all around. So hopefully, don't think he can get off. All right. Good catch, Kylie. It's a good old paddlefish. We'll get him on the stringer. And we got a couple paddlefish. Maybe we'll get a, a bigger one here in a second. All right, guys. We just hooked into another one. It is taking drag. Luckily, we got that 100 pound braid and a nice heavy duty action rod. All right, guys, so here is paddlefish number two, about two plus later. I think I figured out where they're all at. I was going to have to get close to the current, moved over just a touch, and start getting them again. It's a little smaller. You might let this guy go and turn it a little bigger. Oh, my gosh. Didn't want to do Say bye bye. All right, buddy. We got some growth. We'll let you go. Nice paddlefish. Mm -hmm. He has like ticks on him or something. Get him back in. Oh, oh bye! No, this guy was feisty. All right, guys, we got fish number five. We got these two small ones. I really wanted that legal limit, but Let's see what this one looks like. Oh, it's a carp. This one's a carp, guys. Mm -hmm. Loaded. Pretty big silver carp. These are actually really good eating, but they're incredibly bony. So in Asian countries, they actually brought them over to the U.S. to farm, and then those farm ponds got flooded out when the river flooded, and they got all into the U.S. river systems. But 
these fish are delicious. The thing is, is it's just super bony. When you, there's no way to flay them without getting quite a bit of bone. Asian company or countries really like fish soup. So in fish soup, I have a friend, you basically, you cook them down so the bones just kind of melt away. So it really doesn't matter how many bones there are. But uh, there was actually the Missouri State record catfish, 130 pounds was cut on a piece of cut silver carp. And so they are good eating fish. It's just a lot of work for the meat. All right, Kylie's got fish number two on. What is it? Is it another paddlefish? This could be paddlefish number four. I think he might be another short one. I'll have to see here. It's either a paddlefish or uh... Oh no, he's a small paddlefish. We'll get him out back in the water here in a second. Oh man, fish jumping in the background. All right. I think he does. I think it's just underwater. This water's really murky. This guy is definitely probably not that keeper size. So we are gonna get him. There he is. I try to do as quick of release as possible. There's the hook. And there he goes, guys. He's gone. Yeah, we got some big ones. We're gonna go ahead and drive on back with the fish in the boat. There we go. Heading on out, old trusty 1958 Evan Rood outboard. All right, guys, we caught five nice paddlefish today. We released three of the smaller ones, somewhere a, a below the legal limit. But these guys we took home, we're gonna go ahead and cook these up and they're gonna be excellent in the air fryer. Might even grill some. We've got a lot of paddlefish. My grandma definitely would probably love some as well. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and as always, best of luck fishing.